Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm going to show you how to crochet this beautiful starry sky granny sweater. This is actually a request that um, some of you asked about. A while back, when it was a little warmer out, we made a sleeveless top out of two granny squares sandwiched together. And several of you asked me to um, show how to make sleeves, how to add sleeves onto it and make it more of a sweater. So um, in this tutorial, we are gonna learn how to do the granny square again, in case you didn't see that tutorial. We're gonna make two of them, the front and the back, and then we're gonna learn how to add some sleeves in the same granny stitch. And then our sweater also has an extension that has like a nice split. So uh, when you move around, it will kind of move with you. Uh, but we're gonna learn how to, to, to extend the bottom a little bit as well in the same granny stitch. So um, this is very customizable. You can make the granny square as large or small as you would like it to be. Uh, with clever seaming, you can make the neck hole as large or as small as you would like it to be, as well as the arm openings, which will determine the width of your sleeves. Now I did a short sleeve and I did a nice wide kind of fluttery sleeve on mine um, and also, you can customize the length as well by doing this extension, and I'm going to show you how later on the video you can make this as long as you would like it to be. You can make it very, very long if you want. If you choose not to put the extended part on, it will be more of like a, a waist length or a crop, depending on um, how long your torso is. So we're going to go through make the body part of the sweater first, then the sleeves, and then finally the bottom, and then we're gonna bring it all together. So even though this is very customizable in size, I'll give you some of the dimensions that I got. We have about 16 inches across, if we kind of go around here and across. Um, now from the shoulder top to the bottom of the sweater, measures about 18 inches long. And then if we go from the sleeve all the way across to the other sleeve, kind of the wingspan of the sweater. That is about 26 inches. Now again, you can customize this however you want. You could make it down to your knees if you want it. You could make your sleeves narrower. And I'm gonna show you how to continue with your sleeve if you wanna do a short sleeve like me, or if you wanna do like a long sleeve or a three quarter length sleeve or an elbow sleeve as well. You can really make this as long as you would like it to be. So let's get started. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, some stitch markers when we go to put everything together. You'll need a tape measure uh, if you're after a certain size and to get the size that you want. We're gonna be using a six millimeter J crochet hook. This is my Furls Odyssey in the turquoise. Uh, I'll put the link down below and a coupon code if you'd like to get one for yourself. And then let's look at this yarn. We're gonna be using about 748 yards of worsted weight yarn. Now I have um, some yarn here that I'll be using. This is the, this is all from Knit Crate. This is the Uru yarn sugared worsted in the colorway wolves. And I'm gonna be using two skeins of this, 219 yards each. And then I have two skeins here of the Aldine Wool's Chill. Um, the colorway is called Let's Get Crazy, which is cute. Uh, this is, um, again, all worsted weight, both colors. And each one of these is 150 yards. So all together, 748 yards of worsted weight yarn. We're going to begin with the main part of the sweater, the granny squares. So I'm gonna show you how to do the granny squares and then later we're gonna add the sleeves, etc. So we're gonna begin by doing two granny squares. I grabbed the dark blue because I'm gonna do those with that yarn. Now, I wanted to also point out at the beginning of the video, I had the yarns in skeins and I've uh, wound them into cakes. Um, all the yarn that you saw is now wound into cakes. Um, you can wind it into a ball if you don't have a, a cake winder. Um, or a ball winder. Um, and then if you're wondering what this is, this is a cake cuff. I um, get those from a yarn shop that I really love. And I'll put the link down below if you'd like to get one for yourself. But as you do the center pull, everything stays together. It's really nice. I'll put the link down below if you'd like to check those out as well. So to begin, let me zoom way in so you can see what I'm doing here. We're gonna put a slip knot on our hook. We're gonna go through the first couple of rounds and then kind of work through the rest on our own as our square grows. So to make a slip knot, wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop. 
bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your crochet hook, bring up the loop and tighten. And next we're going to do a ring that we'll work our stitches into. So we're going to chain four to make a chain, wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, and four. And then in that first chain you made, the chain farthest from our hook, we're going to work a slip stitch to create our ring. So insert the hook into that farthest chain from the hook, bring up a loop, now bring that loop through the loop that's already on your hook. And then what I like to do is just kind of open that ring up so you can see it really well and work those stitches in. We're also going to hold this tail along the edges we work and that will weave it in as we go along. Okay, so for round one, what we're going to do is chain four. One, two, three, and four. And then we're going to work three double crochets into the center of the ring. So to make a double crochet, wrap the yarn around the hook, insert it into the center of the ring and bring up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Wrap the yarn around the hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap the yarn around the hook, bring it through the last two loops. So that's one double crochet and we're going to be doing three. So one and two and three. Then we're going to chain one. Then we're going to work three more double crochets. And if you notice, I'm sort of pushing my stitches out of the way so it'll give me more space in that ring. Okay? So we did a chain one. Then we're going to work three more double crochets into the center of the ring. So one, two, and three. Then we're going to chain one once again, pushing things over if you need to holding that tail along the edge, work three more double crochets into the center of the ring. So one, two, and whoops, three, just like that. And then what we're going to do is we're now going to, once again, chain one, and then this time work two double crochets into the center of the ring. So one double crochet and two double crochets. Now remember that chain four at the beginning of the round? We're gonna treat that as our third double crochet chain one, okay? So count three chains up, one, two, three. Those first three chains count as our double crochet. And we're gonna work a slip stitch in that third chain up. So insert the hook into that third chain up, bring up a loop, now bring that loop through the loop already on the hook. And that, chain, that extra chain is going to serve as the chain that's in between these groupings, okay? So round one is complete, and our, now our little granny square looks like a little plus sign. We have four groupings of these double crochet stitches. Now, for round two, we need to get to the right spot. We're not quite at the right spot to start the round. Whenever you start a granny square round, you want to start in one of the corners. So what we need to do is go into that corner space, See that first space in between the groupings here? And work a slip stitch. So work a slip stitch into that first corner space. And then what we're going to do is begin round two. So what we want to do for round two is chain three. One, two, three. And I do love the subtle change of blues that we're seeing. It's fun. And then what we're going to do is work two double crochets into that same space. So one double crochet and two double crochet. And then we're going to create a corner. So we're going to chain one and then work three more double crochets into this into that same space. So one, two, and whoops, let's redo that one. Sometimes your stitch doesn't come out quite the right way, so it's okay to pull it off, or pull it apart rather, and redo it, okay? So that was three double crochet. So now we have a corner. See a little corner here? Then we're gonna chain one, and then we're gonna hop over to the next space. So skip over that next grouping of three double crochets and go to that next chain one space, and we're gonna do the same thing. But we didn't have a starting chain this time, so this time we're gonna do three double crochet, one, two, 
three, chain one, and in that same space, three more double crochet. One, two, and three, okay? Chain one, and then do the same thing. Skip over that next three double crochet grouping and go to the chain one space and do the same thing you just did. Three double crochet, one, two, three, chain one. Whoops, I dropped my, my loop there. Chain one, and then three more double crochet in that same space. One, two, and three. Chain one, and then the last space there, hop over that next grouping, and then, then that next chain one space, do the same thing. Last time we'll be doing that. Three double crochet, one, two, three, chain one, and three more double crochet, one, two, and three. Now we're at the beginning where we began our round. And so what we're gonna do is, remember that starting chain at the beginning of the round? We're gonna count three chains up once again. One, two, three, and join with a slip stitch to close. Insert the hook, bring up a loop, bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. And now you can shape it up a little bit. We have this cute little granny square, okay? So let's do a couple more rounds together because it's, um, it's gonna change a little bit. Okay, so remember when I said we need to um, be in the corner space to begin each round? We're not quite in the right space as, as you can see. We're kind of off to the side. So we need to, to slip stitch over to that first corner space. So in each stitch over here, work a slip stitch. So slip stitch in that first stitch, slip stitch in that next stitch, and then slip stitch into the corner space, just like that and then chain three. One, two, three. And we're gonna do the same thing we did before in the corners. So work two double crochet, because remember that chain three counts as our first double crochet. So one double crochet, two double crochet, pushing things over if needed. And then chain one, and then three more double crochet in that same corner space. One, two, and three. Okay, so we just made another corner. Now, our square is growing. So before we did corner, 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 corner. Now we have sides, and we're gonna have sides for the rest of our square. So for this round, we're gonna have, there's a little piece of fiber. We're gonna have a corner, side, corner, side, corner, side, corner, and so forth, okay? So to work the sides, all you're gonna do, we did our chain one, all we're gonna do is work three double crochets in that side space. So one, two, and three. Chain one, and then we're at a corner again. So we're gonna work our corners the way we've been working them. Three double crochet, one, two, three, chain one, and then three more double crochet in that same corner space. One, two, and three. Now we're at a side, so chain one, and work three double crochet in that side space. One, two, three. Chain one, we're at a corner, three double crochet. One two, and three, chain one, and then the, in the same corner space, three double crochet. One, two, and three. Chain one, and then we're at a side, so three double crochet. One, two, and three. Chain one, corner, three double crochet, one, two, whoops, and three, chain one, 
and three double crochet. One, two, and three. Chain one, and here we are almost at the end. Work your side. Three double crochet. One, two, and three. Chain one, and then we can close the round. Count three chains up. One, two, three, from that starting chain at the beginning of the round. And join with a slip stitch to close. And our granny square has grown. Okay, so what we wanna do now is keep going with the round that we just did, okay? So you're just gonna repeat the round that we just did over and over. And then, but I did wanna point out that each time, because our square will be growing in height and width, each time you do a round, you're gonna be adding a side. So as you can see here, when we begin the next round, it's gonna be a corner, side, side, corner, side, side, corner, side, side, corner, and so forth. The, the round after that will be corner, side, 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 corner, okay? So each time you'll add uh, more sides to your square as it grows, okay? So I'm gonna keep working my square. If you need to back up and watch any of the rounds again, definitely feel free to do that. And I'm gonna keep going with my square and what you'll wanna have at the end of this part is two granny squares um, that are the exact same size and the same number of rounds. And because we're making this into a sweater, you'll want it to be able to, the, the front one and the back one, you want the front one to be able to wrap around you comfortably, not stretched around you and not like hanging off of you. Okay, so you know, nice, um, fit around you and then the other one. Now, if you want to grab some stitch markers or something like that and sort of clip the squares together um, and sort of like slip it on, you know, that's even more helpful. So I'm going to keep going with my squares. We'll talk more about sizing in just a minute, but I just wanted to kind of let you know that part as you're making your square to keep that in mind. So I'm going to keep going with my squares and when we rejoin, um, we'll start putting things together and working on the sleeves. Okay, just working that last stitch of my square. And then chain one and then join to close the round with a slip stitch. Okay, so what we're going to do now is cut the yarn and fasten off because I don't have quite enough yarn to do another round and I'm going to give you some dimensions here in just a second. So just fasten off and I've already gone ahead and made my second square and they're the same size. So we're going to fasten off on that square too. So if you haven't made your second square, go ahead and do that now. Just make sure it's the same number of rounds and it measures the same as well. Okay, so we are gonna save, I do have a, a, a yard or two of yarn that I'm gonna use for seaming these up. Now, like I mentioned before, this part of our tutorial is gonna be just like the part where um, we made the shirt. So, and then where the sleeves part is gonna be the, the, the new part that we haven't seen yet. Okay, so I have my two squares and they are 17 inches by 17 inches, both of them. And then for our rounds, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 rounds on there with that. So the next thing we wanna do, and then my other square is the same, just as a side note. I am gonna very quickly flip these over we're gonna pull the center tail that we wove as we went along. We're gonna pull that tight. And then we're going to give it a little snip, okay? So just do that for both of those center tails. And then I'm gonna just go ahead and weave in, I have two tails from where we left off to when we ended our square. So go ahead on, this one has to be flipped. Flip it over to the back side, because that's the side that when you wear it will be against you and not seen. So go ahead and weave that end in on both squares where you left off and give it a snip. And then we have down here our other tail for our other square, okay? So if you made the other granny square top that I made a few months back, you'll notice that um, this part is gonna be the same, like I said before. So what we're gonna do is grab our squares now Okay, so I have both of my squares, the ends are woven in. 
the side, the, the outside or the right side of our square, the side that faced you while you work the rounds, is going to be the public side or the outward facing side of your sweater. Okay. So what we're going to do now is turn those outside and face them in and sandwich them together. Okay. So go ahead and do that. Now this, I'm going to make this the top of my sweater. It doesn't matter. It's a square, it's the same size height and width. So it doesn't matter, but uh, you can just pick what you want. And then we're going to grab some stitch markers and we're going to mark the armholes and the neck hole and start working on our seaming. So I like to use stitch markers, but you can use some scrap yarn. It really doesn't matter. It's completely up to you. So I want to first mark the two corner spaces. So I'm going to sandwich those together. This is going to be the shoulder. Then I'm going to grab another one and come across here and the other corner space we're going to kind of clip that together as well. Now what you'll want to do is figure out how large you would like the neck opening to be and we're going to put some stitch markers there to indicate that. Okay so grab two more stitch markers and what we're going to do is just make it the same on both sides. So I have a uh, Right after my stitch marker, I have a cluster, cluster two, cluster three, and I'm lining these up. I'm putting my finger in the spaces to line those up. So one, two, three, four, and I'm going to clip it on. Other stitch marker and make sure it's the same on both sides. So on this side, I had one, two, three, four clusters, and then I placed a stitch marker. And then on this side, one, two, three, four clusters, and then I placed my stitch marker. Just use those spaces in between the clusters to make sure both layers are lined up. So one, two, three, four, place the stitch marker. Okay, so now we have our shoulder. We're going to seam in between these to create the shoulder, and we're going to seam in between these to create this side and then this will be our neck opening. Now before you start seaming, you'll want to pop it on your head and make sure that your head can fit through because if your head can't fit through, that would be um, not good and you wouldn't be able to put the sweater on, okay? So then what we're gonna do is flip it around. Now we have the top established and we're going to place a marker for the armhole. So this will be the top of our armhole here, that one in the corner space that we did. And we're going to come down where the arm opening is, and then this will be the side of our sweater. So this part is extremely important. You'll want to make sure the sleeve opening is going to be big enough to not only put your arm through, but this will also determine the circumference of your sleeve because we're going to be building off of this and to create our sleeve. So you want to make sure that this opening is going to be big enough. So grab another stitch marker and I've already measured mine. So mine is going to be one cluster past the stitch marker. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And that's going to be the opening of my sleeve. And I'm going to put a stitch marker into both layers right in that space. So I have the opening of my sleeve and that it will be large enough. Now if you make it too large and open, then your sleeve will be baggy. And obviously if you don't give yourself enough of an opening, it will be too tight. Okay. So once again, from the top, I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven clusters. So spin around to the other side and this is the top. Actually, if I flip it, it will be a little bit more understandable. So here's the top. Okay, everything's seamed and if you have any ends, go ahead and weave those in now. I have just this last one. I did the other ones a minute ago. So again, go in one direction, come back in the other direction and give it a little snip. All right, now we're ready to do the sleeves. So let's take out our stitch markers. Everything is seamed up so we know exactly what we're working with here. We don't need to mark it anymore. So take those out. 
And then what we're gonna do, once they're all out, or your yarn scraps, whatever you used, anything works like that will work great. Um, we're gonna turn this right side out. So go in from the bottom and just flip it out, okay? So we do, we have our little top. It looks pretty familiar to the other one that we made. And this would be just super cute by itself too. I love this color. Um, we're gonna work on the sleeves. We want it to be right side out because when we stitch up our sleeves, um, our stitches are gonna face outward also. We're gonna be working in the round, okay? So grab your sleeve color. For me, I'm using this lavender color because I think it looks really pretty with the um, navy blue, tones of navy blue. We're gonna be working into the spaces. We're gonna be creating some grannies uh, in the round for our sleeve. Now you can make your sleeve full length to your wrist or um, you could do a quarter length. This is a full length sleeve that I'm wearing. You could do a full length or you could do a three quarter sleeve, which is uh, falls below the elbow, um, kind of in between the elbow and the midpoint of your forearm, okay? So depending on the amount of yarn you have and kind of what look you're going for, you can do that. We're gonna be working our, our grannies, our granny rounds in the um, spaces of our sleeve. But I wanted to kind of show you before we begin, we're gonna work into these, these side, let me turn it this way, these side spaces here will be pretty easy to see. But when we come around where we've, where we've seen the two together, we're gonna work into this side space here and this side space here, okay? And then down in the underarm, um, we're gonna be working, there'll be two side spaces down at the bottom like that, okay? So what we wanna do first is we're gonna go into the armhole and in this first this is the top where the shoulder is. So in this first corner space here, let me zoom way in so you can see. See we have our, this is a part of our square. So this first corner space of our sleeve on the top of the shoulder, we're gonna grab our yarn and we're gonna insert our hook into that space. And we're gonna bring it through. And again, we'll take care of all the ends when we're finished. And we're just going to tie it right on. As a side note, I use these when I cake up my yarn, I use these cake cuffs. Um, if you're interested in these, I can provide the link down below the shop that uh, they make them by hand and they're so nice. They keep your cakes nice and neat. Anyway, so we tied our yarn on and then what we're gonna do, we're gonna do the same granny cluster as we did for the shirt. That will, we're gonna mimic the same stitch, but just in a different color and that'll make a really pretty look for our sweater. Okay. So we're gonna go back into that same corner space, bring up a loop and we're gonna chain three. One, two, three. This will count as one of the double crochets of our cluster. So we're gonna go ahead in that same space and do two double crochet. One and two, okay? Chain one, hop over to the next space and work three double crochet. One, two, and three. Chain one. We're just doing this all the way around the opening of our arm. Okay, next space, three double crochet. One, two, three. Chain one. Next space, three double crochet. One, two, three, chain one, next space, one, two, three, chain one. You can see we have some really pretty stitches here. I love this lavender with this dark blue. Okay, next space, three double crochet, one, two, three, chain one. And we're just gonna do this all the way around. We're gonna do the first uh, round together all the way around. Next space, three double crochet. One, two, and three, chain one. Next space. Now we're in the underarm part, and I wanted to, I already kind of showed this a minute ago, but 
there's going to be, I'm going to put my hand back here so you can see it. There's going to be a space here, and then this is that underarm seam, and then a space here. Okay, so we're going to do three double crochet. One. Two. Three. Chain one, hop over to that next space, that underarm seam space right next to it. Three double crochet, one, whoops, my yarn split, let me back up. If you ever do a stitch and you don't like the way it looks, just back up and redo it. You'll definitely be glad you did instead of having a stitch that you keep noticing <laughs> when your piece is complete. Okay, so I did three double crochet, chain one. All right, turn your work because we're continuing around here. Next space, three double crochet, one, two, three, chain one, next space, three double crochet, one, whoops, let's do that again, two, three, chain one, Moving right along, next space, three double crochet, one, two, three, chain one. Next space, one, two, three, chain one. Next space, three double crochet, one, two, and three, chain one. Almost done here. Next space, one, two, and three, chain one. And then we're at that other corner space. Let me get this tail out of the way so you don't have to see it. It's confusing when there's tails everywhere. But we're at the, the other corner space. Remember we began at the corner space? We're at that other side corner space, okay? Three double crochet into that. One, two, and three. Chain one. And then we're back to where we started. So remember that chain we did at the beginning, that chain three? Count one, two, three chains up. Join with a slip stitch to close the round. And the foundation of our sleeve has begun, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do another round together. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna start, um, let me zoom out so you can see better. See, we have a little sleeve now. So what we're gonna do is work on round two, and then that will be the round that you keep doing. Okay, so let's turn this around. And I know I mentioned long sleeves, uh, three quarter sleeves, you can do short sleeves, um, whatever you like, okay? So what we need to do now, because we're sticking with the same color, what we need to do now is slip stitch over to that first space. We're kind of just past that last space we did. It, it would be kind of weird if we tried to work back into those into that space. It, would, it wouldn't look right. So we need to slip stitch over to that first space, okay? So work a slip stitch, slip stitch, and then slip stitch into the space, and then we're gonna chain three. One, two, three, and work three double crochet, into that first space, um, excuse me, two double crochet because that chain three counted as one of our double crochets. Okay, so two double crochets rather. Okay, chain one, and then we're gonna take this around again. Okay, three double crochet, one, two, three, chain one, next space, one, two, three, chain one, next space, one, let's do that again, one, two, 
three, chain one, next space, one, two, three, chain one, next space, one, two, three, chain one, next space, one, two, three, chain one, next space, one, two, three, chain one, just moving right around here. Next space, one, two, three, chain one, one, two, three, chain one, Next space, three double crochet once again. One, two, three, chain one. And so forth, all the way around. So I'm doing three double crochet in this space. Now I wanted to mention that the sleeve that I'm creating, because my opening was um, on the wider side. Now, the the way you seam it will really dictate how wide your sleeve is going to be. Okay, I wanted mine to be more of a wider sleeve because I like the look of that for this one I'm making. But if you want a narrower sleeve, obviously your opening. Um, whoops, my yarn split again. Um, you know, if you want a narrower sleeve, your arm hole would be smaller. All right, we're in the home stretch. Three double crochet in this space. One, two, three. Chain one. And next, last space. Next space and the last space. <laughs> three double crochet. One, two, three. Chain one. And then we're gonna join like we did before. Count three chains up, join with a slip stitch to close the round, okay? Now I'm not gonna take my hook out yet because I'm gonna keep going with my sleeves, but I just wanted to show you how cute these sleeves are getting. So I'm gonna keep going with the round two of my sleeve round and then, um, You'll want to take that as, as long as you want your sleeve to be. So you could do like a, a nice little short sleeve, like, a, like I, we talked about before, we could do like a short sleeve, you could do a three quarter sleeve, um, you could do a long sleeve, etc. okay? So keep going with round two of your sleeve until it's as long as you would like it to be, and then what you'll do is you'll just repeat the same thing. You can back up the video if you like, but you wanna do the same thing for, the, for your other armhole as well. So keep going with your sleeve, and when we rejoin, I'm gonna show you the progress that I've made on my sleeve, and then we're gonna start on the next part. Okay, just working our last stitch of our sleeve. And I'm gonna show you the whole thing in just a minute. I'm gonna join with a slip stitch to close the round. And as you can see, I did a short sleeve. It's a wide short sleeve though, so it's gonna kinda of drape really nice. And I ended up doing 10 rounds on mine. So once you get your sleeve to how you want it to be, and remember the opening when we sewed our squares together, the opening of the um, armhole will determine the circumference of your sleeve. So if you seam it a little narrower, you'll have a narrower sleeve. If you do it wider like me, you'll have a wider sleeve, okay? So what we need to do now is cut our yarn and go ahead and fasten off. Wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through. And then later we can weave in some of these ends. But I just wanted to show you 
how lovely this sleeve looks. Now, you can keep going, um, like we talked about before, and do a long sleeve. You could do a three quarter length sleeve. You could just do like a little cap sleeve if you just wanna put a few rounds on there just to cover up like the top of the shoulder. So the next thing you're gonna do <clears throat> is come across here and you're gonna do the same exact thing on this side to do your other sleeve. If you need to back up the video and rewatch it for this side too, feel free to do that. You can just back things right up and rewatch it. But the next part we're gonna do together is, um, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other sleeve on my own because we already know how to do the one sleeve. We're just gonna duplicate that. But we're gonna learn next how to extend the bottom of your shirt if you would like to do that. Now, as it stands, now for mine, the, ma the way I made my square, it's sort of like a crop style. And I wanted to add like a tunic extension just to bring it um, down over the hips a little bit. And we're gonna do this in two parts. We're gonna work a front panel and we're gonna work a back panel. And what that's gonna do, working in rows across the bottom, is it's gonna give a really pretty split here, which also helps with the ease. When you go to sit down or move around, your, your shirt won't be really tight around the hips. It'll kind of open up and allow you to move a little bit more. So what we need to do is flip our shirt around and we're gonna locate the corner space. Remember how we did it, the granny square and each corner has a corner space. So right in here, is our corner space and we're gonna tie the yarn one to that. Okay, so we're gonna grab our yarn and our hook and let me just zoom way into the spot where we're starting here so you can see it really good. We're gonna come up to this corner space. So locate that corner space right where you rounded that turn and you're gonna insert your hook into that corner space. And then we're going to bring the new yarn through and then just tie it right on. Next, we're gonna reinsert our hook into that same space, bring up a loop and chain three. One, two, three. This is gonna count as one of our double crochets. And then what we're gonna do is work two double crochets into that same space. So one double crochet and two double crochet. Then we're gonna chain one and work three double crochet into the next space. We're doing like a granny stripe. So one, two, and three. Chain one, next space, same thing. Three double crochet in that space. One, two, three. Chain one, next space, three double crochet. One, two, and three, chain one. And we're just gonna do this all the way across till we get to our other corner space all the way down at the end, okay? So let's do a few more together. Next space, three double crochet. One, two, three, I'm gonna just back up and redo that one. <laughs> three, chain one. All right, so keep working three double crochet, chain one in every space across. And then once we get towards the end, we'll rejoin and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, coming up to the end of row one, and I'm again, just going into that corner space at the other end of the square. We're not going on to the back or the sides or anything, just that corner space. We're gonna work three double crochet, one, two, let me just get my yarn situated here, three, and now we're done. So you can see we're starting to get a little bit of an extension down the front, okay? So what we're gonna do for row two is we're gonna chain four, one, two, three, Four, and we're gonna turn our work, because again, we're working in rows. So for this piece, we have worked in rounds to make a granny square, in rounds to make a sleeve, and now we're working in rows to do the bottom. So we're doing a little bit of everything here. All right, so we did a chain four, then we're gonna turn our work. So in this first space that you come to right here, what we're gonna do is work the same clusters we were doing. So three double crochet, chain one. 
So one, two, three, chain one. And then do that in each space all the way across. So in the next space, three double crochet, one, two, three, chain one, okay? So you're just gonna work three double crochet, chain one in each space all the way across. And again, once we get towards the end of this row, once again, we'll rejoin and we'll transition from row two to three. Okay, just coming up to the end of row two, and I'm at that last space of the row, so we're gonna work three double crochets in that last space, one, two, and three, and then chain one. And now see, we just have one little cluster left at the end of the row. If you kind of pull it apart, you can see it, it was the turning chain on the end here and then the two double crochets the way we started the row. What you're gonna do is locate that turning chain all the way over here. And that topmost chain of our turning chain, we're gonna work a double crochet right into that topmost chain to finish off the row. Just like that. And now row two is complete. So we're starting to get a little bit more length here. Okay, let's move on to row three. For row three, we're gonna chain three, one, two, three, and then we're gonna turn our work once again. And then what we're gonna do is in this first space for row three, we're gonna work two double crochets because this chain three we just did counts as one of the double crochets. So in that very first space here, work two double crochet, one, and two, and then what we're gonna do is we're going to chain one, and then in each space across, once again, we're gonna work three double crochet, chain one. So let's do the first one together. One double crochet, two double crochet, three double crochet, and chain one, okay? So work your three double crochet, chain one in each space all the way across. And when we get to the end of row three, we'll rejoin and transition onto row four. Okay, we're coming up to the end of row three. And what we're gonna do just in that turning chain space at the end of the row, we're going to work three double crochet. So one, two, and three. Now at any point, if you've extended the bottom of your shirt as, as long as you want it to be, maybe you just wanna add a, a few decorative rows just to give bring a little color down to the bottom. Um, or if you wanna keep going, we're gonna keep going and do two more rows of this. Um, I'm gonna show you two more rows and then I'm gonna show you how to keep going if you wanna make it even longer, okay? So we just finished row three, let's move on to row four. For row four, we're gonna chain four. One, two, three, and four. And then we're gonna turn. And then in this first space here that you come to, you see you have your cluster, and then that first space you come to, we're gonna work three double crochet, chain one. So one double crochet, two double crochet, and three double crochet, chain one. Then we're just gonna work three double crochet, chain one in each space across, just like we've been doing. We're just starting and ending the rows a little bit differently um, each time so that they are nice and straight when you wear it um, and it, nothing's ruffly or ripply or lumpy looking. So once again, just work three double crochet, chain one in each space across. So I'm gonna continue across with row four, and when we rejoin, I'll show you how to finish up row four and start on row five. Okay, just coming up to the end of row four, and we're gonna work three double crochet, chain one in that last space, one, two, and three. Then we're gonna chain one, and then we're gonna work a double crochet into the topmost chain of that turning chain space from the previous row. Same thing we did a couple rows back. So double crochet in that topmost chain, and row four is complete. Let's move on to row five. Row five is the last row I'm gonna show you because to keep going, if you wanna keep going and create more length, you're just gonna repeat rows four and five to over and over to finish it. So let me show you row five, and then if you want to keep going with your piece, you can do that too. For row five, we're going to chain three, one, two, three, and turn our work. Okay. 
Now this chain three counts as a double crochet. So in this first space, this very first space, work two double crochet, one and two. Whoops, let me redo that one. I did one and then two and then chain one. And then in every space across, we're gonna do our same three double crochet, chain one. So one, two, three, chain one. All right, go ahead and work three double crochet, chain one in every space across. And when we get to the end of row five, I'll show you how to finish that up too. All right, just coming up to the end of row five, and then the last thing we're gonna do is in this turning chain space, just work three double crochet to finish the row. So one, two, and three. Okay, now let me just move my hook out of the way, and we're gonna zoom out a little bit so we can see our handiwork. Let me just spin this back around. We now have extended the bottom and it looks super cute and you can really customize this for whatever length that you want it to be. And when we do the back part, we're going to have a nice little split to give it some ease, okay? So to continue with some length, if you want even more length than this, just keep repeating rows four and five, four and five, over and over and over again. You could technically make this a long tunic all the way down your legs if you wanted to. Um, also, we're going to, I'm going to add the other sleeve on. So we already have directions for that. We're just gonna do it the same exact way. And then when you get the length that you want onto your tunic extension, as we'll call it, what you'll wanna do is flip your piece over and spin it back around and do the same thing on the back. So you'll uh, once again start in that corner space and continue across the same way, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and add the back part and the other sleeve. And if you need to back up the video and watch either two of these parts again for the other two that you're gonna be adding, feel free to do that as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the pieces and then when we rejoin, we'll see what it all looks like together. Just working that last stitch, the last part of this sleeve here. And then we are all done. I'm going to cut the yarn. Fasten off. And our sweater is complete. We just have to weave in the ends. So let me just spin this around and show you. So I add, went ahead and added the second sleeve. So now we have, let me just zoom out so you can see. Now we have two sleeves and our bottom extension. So just to recap, I did 10 rounds per sleeve and five rows for each part. So there's a back part and a front part and we have a nice little split here. So the last thing we need to do is weave in the ends. Now you'll probably have a couple of ends where you began and ended for all of these sections on the bottom part and the sleeves. But I'm just gonna show you really quickly. Um, we're gonna grab our tapestry needle and go ahead and thread it. And I'm just gonna flip this up because we're gonna go along the insides of these inside loops. So we're just gonna go, we're gonna stay in this lavender area so it will blend. If we tried to, um, venture up to the blue area would definitely show. So we're gonna go in one direction with our tail, and then I like to come back in the other direction just to kind of lock it into place. And feel free to go in between those plies. That'll hold it a little bit more snug as well. And then you can just grab your scissors and give it a little trim, and then just repeat that for all of your tails. So our ends are all woven in and our sweater looks absolutely beautiful. So that is how you crochet the Starry Sky Granny sweater. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiber Flux video updates. Thanks again.